Imagine that you have installed and configured Kubernetes cluster. And now it's time to deploy applications and manage Kubernetes objects inside the Kubernetes. So how can you create and manage Kubernetes objects from a command line? Hello and welcome to kubectl. So in next few minutes, I'll try my best to explain what is kubectl and how you can use kubectl to manage Kubernetes objects such as pods, deployments, and services, all using kubectl. But before you watch this video, it is good to have a basic understanding of what is Kubernetes and its basic architecture. In case if you need a help with that, please do check the links in the description below. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you'll be learning in this video. In first section, we'll discuss the concept around kubectl. What is it, what it does and its syntax. After that, we'll review the demo we are able to perform. This will help you better understand when you watch actually doing it live on the system. So in this review demo, I'll show you some of the common operations you can perform inside Kubernetes using kubectl. And some of the common operations that we perform here in this video are kubectl create, kubectl get, kubectl describe, kubectl delete, kubectl exact, and kubectl logs. And finally, in third section, we'll have the actual demo performing those operations on live Kubernetes cluster. So now, let's get started with what is kubectl. So, what is kubectl? It is a command line interface for running commands against the Kubernetes cluster. We use kubectl command in Kubernetes for creating, updating, displaying, and even deleting any Kubernetes objects inside Kubernetes. All Kubernetes command starts with kubectl, which we'll see in shortly. kubectl is also called as kube control, kubectl, or kube cuttle. All are one and same. So it's very important to get a grip around kubectl. I'll show you some of the tips and tricks around kubectl in next slide. Here is a syntax of kubectl. Let's explore what these options are in detail now. As we discussed in previous slide, in Kubernetes, we manage resources using kubectl command line utility. So every operation starts with kubectl. It is constant across and it is followed by command. Command specifies the operations that you want to perform on one or more resources. For example, create, get, describe, delete, logs, and exact. All these are operations inside Kubernetes. So where do these operators operate on? It operates on resource types. That's where the type comes in. Type specifies the resource type. Resource types are case insensitive. We can specify the resource type in upper or lower case, singular or plural, or abbreviated forms. So you have a lot of flexibility here. Here are the, some of the examples of most frequently used resource types. For example, we can mention the resource type pod in singular as a pod or in plural as pods or abbreviated form as PO. I generally prefer to use lower abbreviated form across. However, you can use your comfortable format. Please note, there are no abbreviations for some of the resource types such as jobs and cron jobs. In that case, we need to use full name. So in this course, each of these resource types are individual concepts by itself, which will be covered in detailed video. So rest of the course will be around these resource types. For now, it's an opportunity for you to get familiarized with the names and their short forms. After type, we have the name of the object we are able to create. And at the last, we have flags. For example, if you want to print wide command output, you can use hyphen W as a flag. Here is a complete example of kubectl command. In this example, we are displaying pod name nginx pod with a wide output. 
In next few slides, we'll be creating, displaying, executing logs, and deleting Kubernetes objects with the help of kubectl. So this should give you a good starting point for the kubectl. In next few slides, we'll review the demo we are able to perform on live Kubernetes cluster. In the demo, we'll be using the commands you are seeing on the screen. First, let's start with create and get command. We'll review the kubectl create and kubectl get commands. First, to create Kubernetes objects inside Kubernetes, we'll use the kubectl create command. We'll pass the Kubernetes manifest file as arguments to this command. This can be JSON or YAML formats. If it is JSON file, then the file extension will be .json. If it's YAML file, then it will be .yaml or just YML will work. Generally, manifest files are written in YAML formats because it is easy to write and understand when compared to JSON formats. Now, let's look at this, some of the examples of it. So if you look at the first example here, pod examples.yaml file is the manifest file. It will contain the pod definition. This file contains the container images we are about to deploy. This manifest file can be any suitable name. And in the same way, we can create deployment using kubectl create command followed by deployment manifest file. If you notice about two commands, we are mentioning only one file name in each of these commands. And that is a way to create and manage individual objects. So how can you create objects from multiple files? And you can do that by having all these YAML files inside a directory. After that, we can create all the objects in one step with the help of kubectl create command followed by directory name where all the YAML file contains. In similar way, you can create all other objects inside Kubernetes using kubectl create command. But the major part here is what goes inside this manifest file. That's what it matters the most. We'll discuss about that in separate videos. Once you have created the resources, now you want to display the resources. For that, we'll use a kubectl get command. That is the syntax of kubectl get command. There, type will be any of the resource that we saw in previous slide, and it is followed by the name of the object. And finally, you have the optional flags. For example, let's say you have created pods. So now to display all pods inside Kubernetes cluster, we'll use kubectl get pods command. In case if you know the name of the pod or just want to print the specific pod information, then you add name of the pod at the end, which is kubectl get pods and pod name, so that it prints specific pod details. As we know, these pods can run on any of the node inside the Kubernetes cluster. So to know which node it is running, then we use wide option with hyphen wide at the end of kubectl get command. So this will give you a wide output, which has the node information as well. And finally, if you want to display multiple resources at same time, you even can do that using kubectl get command, just like below where we are displaying pods and deployments with kubectl get rc and services command. So that's about the kubectl create and get commands. Now we'll discuss about kubectl describe and kubectl delete command operations in this slide. First, kubectl describe command. In case if you ever want to display complete detailed output of a specific resources, including the list of events, then kubectl describe is the command. This command will be very helpful during troubleshooting purpose. So the difference between previous kubectl get command and kubectl describe command are kubectl get will display high level information of a resource, whereas describe will display complete details of a specific resource, including the events triggered by a resource. For example, to display complete details about a specific node, we use kubectl describe command followed by type of the object, which in this case, nodes. 
and name of the node object. Here it will be kubectl describe nodes and node name. It goes same with pod, kubectl describe pods and pod name. In case if we ever want to display details of all pods inside the Kubernetes cluster, then we mention kubectl describe pods. So that's about the describe command. Next is delete command. As most of you guessed it right about this. Yes, kubectl delete will delete the resources. So to delete all resources created by a manifest file, we use kubectl delete command followed by manifest file. In case if you want to delete all the pods and services that have the label name, then we use kubectl delete pod services hyphen l and name of the label. Finally, to delete all the resources of the resource type pod, we just add hyphen all argument at the end. Similarly, you can describe and delete all other resources inside Kubernetes. As we know, pods are nothing but one or more containers. So with the help of kubectl exec command, we interact with containers. First, let's see how to get information from the container. So to print the date from running container, we use the kubectl exec command followed by pod name and the date command at the end. In this case, we assume there is only one container running inside the pod. So we don't have to mention the container name. Similarly, we use other commands. In another scenario, where you have a pod with multiple containers, then to interact with specific container, there you can add hyphen C container name after the pod name followed by the command to be executed. Please note, we are executing these commands from the master node, not from the container. In case if you want to get inside the container, then you use the kubectl exec command with hyphen it options. Here it means interactive terminal. This command will take us to the specific pod and provides interactive bash prompt to execute the commands. So that's about the kubectl exec command. Now, how can we print the logs of a container? Let's imagine that we have scheduled a pod and when it is created, this pod will display 1 to 10 and goes off. So how can you see the output of it? That is where we need kubectl logs command. So to print the logs of specific pod, we use kubectl logs command followed by pod name. And to stream the logs from a running pod, we use hyphen f option. And this is similar to tail minus f in Linux. So that's about the kubectl logs command. So coming to the summary, in this video we first discussed about what is kubectl and what it does. So kubectl is a command line utility which helps us with interacting Kubernetes cluster and manage all your Kubernetes objects. Then we discussed about the syntax of kubectl command. After that, we discussed about six common operations that you will perform with kubectl inside Kubernetes. They are create, get, describe, delete, exact, and logs. Finally, we perform same commands on live Kubernetes cluster. And now that's the end of kubectl. And finally, thank you so much for watching this and I hope to see you in the next video.